shifting gears, ladies and gentlemen, last week we had a, an, an anonymous whistleblower on. But we did not just have the anonymous uh, whistleblower on the broadcast uh, without first doing some checking. And Tony Gosling of Bilderberg.org, uh, he has a radio show in England and has broken a lot of big stories over the years um, as a journalist. He, he said, no, I can vouch for this guy. He's the real deal. And his story also fit into things we'd seen in other big events, G20, NATO, you name it. They're always used to attack the general public, have military on the streets, have daytime, nighttime curfews, have badges, so they can get the police and media all trained basically on hot martial law as they ease the rest of the country's uh, outlying areas uh, into a uh, softer martial law. And he made some amazing allegations uh, that I'll have him repeat here today, but he went by Lee Hazeldean. And when he was on the show, I think he said a little too much about himself. Uh, you know, he, he said, yeah, I worked on this national TV show. I worked on that national TV show. Well, yes, he appeared in them. He, he worked on them. He produced some of them. Um, his real name, of course, uh, is not... Lee Hazeldean, uh, the whistleblower who exposed how he had infiltrated G4S security as an employee and undercover, how security preparations for the Olympics were so poor that they were inviting a terrorist attack, how they were massing troops in the area. He also revealed that they were saying there'd be a big event. He has now, uh, at the end of the uh, Olympics, that would be the biggest event uh, in, in, in recent times. He revealed himself to be Ben Fellows, an acclaimed director who has worked with Stanley Kubrick. Uh, that actually gets me a little bit envious. It's very hard for me to get envious. Uh, Fellows has also appeared in numerous popular television and theater shows. And he's made the decision to reveal his identity after having gone under a pseudonym for the purposes of radio interviews conducted over the last week because of fears for his safety. And we'll find out why he's fearing for his safety and uh, he will recap uh, what's happened to him. But the article with all the bullet points and why this is so important is up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Right now, Olympics whistleblower fears for safety, reveals identity, and he joins us now from, from England. Uh, ben, good to have you on the broadcast with us. Hi, Alex. It's really good to be back with you. Uh, well, uh, recap who you are, what you discovered, and, and then now what started happening to make you think that you may be in danger. Okay. Well, um, I wanted to do a, an expose on G4S. I'd heard a lot of horror stories, and I, want, I was looking for an opportunity to basically go and work for them and see what they were like and see if these horror stories were true, because you never can really believe what other people say. You have to go and look it on the internet and, and, and join these organizations and actually find out. So when the Olympics came up, it was a perfect opportunity to go and see exactly what their working practices were like and, 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 and see, you know, what this organization was about. And really, you know, I got there and it was a catalog of disasters. Um, uh, you know, the, the X-ray machine operators didn't know what they were looking at. They said they were going to turn off the metal detectors in peak times. I was asked to take a knife through a metal detector that didn't go off, and they said, add more metal to your body, like the keys or a mobile phone, which I did, and then it went off. So really, they're not very sensitive, and as far as I'm concerned, the key job of the metal detector is to pick up metal, and they weren't. Um, they told us about an evacuation of London, that it, it, if this was to happen, that we would be uh, responsible for looking after uh, the members of the public. Um, they talked about 200,000 casket, casket linings, uh, when I asked them what's a casket lining, they said, oh, it's, it's like a plastic coffin that fits four people. And that, to me, got me thinking of like, well, why would you have that? Um, okay, on one hand, you could say, uh, all right, it's the Olympics. You never know what's going to happen. Um, there might be a huge natural disaster, an earthquake that's never happened in Stratford or something. I don't know. Uh, um, uh, so you might need these. On the other hand, it just it reminded me of, uh, you know, preparations for false flags. So, you know, this is what G4S was like. So after being there and doing the training, I went to um, Andy Davis, who's the home affairs correspondent for Channel 4 News, um, and I pitched him the story. I emailed him. He called me back. We had a conversation. 
he said, look, you know, um, Channel 4 wouldn't be interested in this. There's kind of a press blackout on doing anything negative about the Olympics. We're not going to be interested, so thanks a lot. So, and that was, that was the end of the call. Anyway, I mentioned his name on the radio in that exact same context. Anyway, uh, last night, Sunday night, he rang me at home on my private home number um, and basically pretended that he had never spoken to me, that I didn't know him, and that I was just one big liar, and this was a major lie, and, you know, I'm in real trouble now. And I, uh, to be honest, you know, I could have handled myself better on the call, but I got so angry at, at the audacity of this man. Anyway, I can prove that our relationship goes back to 2010. I've got emails. I called him for something. He then he emailed me. I emailed him back. We've got correspondence. So, you know, uh, how does he uh, figure that one out? And so um, uh, he knows who I really am, uh, which is why I've had to come out uh, as Ben Fellows, which is who I am. And um, it's, uh, I'm actually worried now that he's gone to G4S to tell them who I am. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and so now I'm actually fearing for my safety. Um, so I thought, look, you know, the best thing to do is come out, tell everyone who you are, why you did it, and, and be the front, be the face of this thing, own it, because that's what this is all about, really, at the end of the day. Um, I've got to leave G4S now, that's it, I'm done, um, because I've been burnt, really, or I don't know that I have. So it's a possibility. So in that way, you can't ever go back in because, you know, I don't want to be on private property with G4S guys. You know, sure. After Days all. after you came on Tony Gosling's show and the day after you came on our broadcast, there was a national TV report or several of them admitting, oh, security problems and confirming some of what you were saying. Uh, do you think that was damage control? Yeah, I, I think so, really. They had the, um, the uh, managing director of uh, global events on. And, you know, the, the hardest question that he, the journalist asked, was said, well, are you sure we're going to be ready? And he said, well, I can't categorically say that we'll be ready. Well, <laughs> why not? It's the Olympics. You've got to categorically say, we're ready. We're going to go at this date. It starts, you know. So, you know, I think that was damage control. I don't think they wanted to, uh, to do that. I spoke to a journalist this afternoon um, uh, who's thinking about doing the story. And, uh, you know, um, uh, he thought that it was the same sort of thing as well, damage control and, and what have you. We spoke a little bit about it. So, yeah, I, I think it was, quite honestly. Um, we're going to have to continue to track this as it unfolds. Uh, but what were you originally doing this for? I mean, what gave you the instinct or, or the idea to try to, the inclination, I should say, to try to infiltrate this? Well, um, uh, several things, really. Um, I've, I've heard anecdotally um, uh, of some horror stories with people who work for the cash delivery services and things like that, that, you know, keys go missing, um, you know, there's general sort of mistakes. Um, I spoke to a mother of a soldier uh, via someone else. Uh, I have to say it was secondhand. But, um, however, she had said that um, her son had been in Iraq as a private soldier with G4S, come out of a bar and killed two of his colleagues. And she was claiming, or she said, that um, he should never have been hired by G4S because after he worked for the British Army, he had post-traumatic stress uh, disorder and G4S, it, it was irresponsible for G4S to hire him. So I thought, you know, okay, I'm not going to sign up and go to war <laughs> with these people. I'll sign up and, and do something else. Now, I was, I was interested in doing the events team and being part of that because it's ad hoc. You know, I could be in the events team for a year. You know, it's odd weekends, you know, events or in the week. And then I can still do all my other things because sometimes you have to be in organizations for a year or more um, before you start really, you know, getting into things. Um, the Olympics has given me an opportunity. It, it, you know, it's been very intense. And so I've seen G4S up close and personal as they've tried to get these 10,400, you know, people who are basically long-term unemployed um, quickly through a training course. Um, that okay, so it is literally uh, right out of Clockwork Orange. Oh, now, yeah. Now, now, expanding on that, now that you're revealing uh, your name, who specifically or what was the date of them talking about some huge event is coming at the end of the Olympics? That's right. Right, okay. So I'm in this training uh, class, and uh, one of the trainers says that we are going to be involved in a, um, uh, I don't have my notes here with this, so I'm not quoting exactly, 
but you know, a historic event in London is going to happen, and we're going to be involved. Actually, it was a defining moment in the history of London. Thank you. Uh, so um, that was uh, uh, what was said. And then I said, oh, what, what do you mean? That's like the Paralympics, <laughs> right? Because after the Olympics, Paralympics. And then she went, no, 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 this is not to do with the Olympics. This is something else. But it would be a defining moment in the history of London. And she wouldn't expand anything more. She said, but, you know, you would be involved. So I took that two ways, again, as I usually do. One version could be, well, okay, we all work for G4S afterwards and we all have permanent jobs. Fantastic, great. That's the legacy that they're, they're going to leave uh, uh, Stratford, which would be a good thing, you know, employing the long-term unemployed and all that kind of thing. The other thing was, oh, my God, uh, what do they mean that we're going to be involved in, in marshalling the general public, you know, dealing with the general public? What disaster could make people leave London? Do you think that's just part of the training to see what you'd say or do? Or, or did you see any other signs that they may be actually planning to evacuate London? Well, um, uh, as far as what happened in the room, this was, they, they have 800 people a day go through this school. I don't know if there's other schools doing the same thing. There may be, may be so. They have 800 people a day go through this place. What these trainers say is just written down for them. They, they're, they're doing it off a PowerPoint presentation. And, you know, all the commentary they, they do, it's all exactly the same it's to the book. You know, they've got a script and they stick to it. So what they say is what they say. Um, uh, I've got a, um, a contact who is uh, an army major in the, in the British Army who is posted at Woolwich Barracks. And he told me that there was, from January to the Olympics, there's going to be 100,000 troops coming into London through Woolwich Barracks. And the idea is they get helicoptered in by Chinook helicopter. They then get, they go into Woolwich Barracks. They have some sort of, you know, a medical or something like that, which is why he knows about it. And then they all get dispatched off to wherever they're going next. You know, it's, it's like a gateway kind of. And you were uh, saying it was UN, uh, NATO, uh, foreign troops. All right. Well, we're going to continue to watch this. Uh, we appreciate uh, you coming on the broadcast, and hopefully down the road, are you going to be able to release any audio, any video of anything that happened uh, inside uh, of the uh, United Nations uh, uh, PR event at the Olympics, or is this going to be basically the end of this? Um, well, you know, I, 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 they know who I am now. Um, so, you know, I'll certainly be releasing the conversation that I've had with Andy Davis. Um, uh, as, as for the training thing, um, uh, the... the, the not really. I'm gonna have to, we have to play it by ear, I think, and, and see how it goes. But what I don't want to do now is um, uh, sort of upset people so much that I actually get physically harmed, you know, so I'm actually a bit worried now. Well, yes, if what you're saying is completely accurate or what they told you is accurate, uh, then you are a key witness to something uh, that is so big they may not be able to even reverse it despite the fact it's been exposed. But... Um, We've gotten whistleblowers before other big events. Uh, I hope that uh, the people you were talking to were misinformed, uh, but I doubt that's the case. Thank you so much uh, for the time. There goes Ben Fellows, whistleblower and uh, director, TV producer. Visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.